welcome to Create Kids. I am really excited about this lesson today. We are going to be talking about who the Holy Spirit is. A lot of times we talk about God, we talk about Jesus, but we don't really talk about who the Holy Spirit is, and he's just as important. So let's get into it. Our scripture is going to come from John 14, 26, and it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have told you. Holy Spirit can be a little bit hard for some people to understand just because he's not really talked about or taught that much. So in order to make it more understandable, I want us to talk about someone that you do understand first, and that's going to be your best friend. So I want you to take a second, think about who that person is, like you're they're the person you want to talk to, that you hang out with all the time. Like Think of that person. Get a picture of them in your head, and let's talk. Um, you play with them all the time, right? Like you'll get your blocks or your Barbies or you'll play video games or you'll jump rope or whatever. Like you just, you always want to play with them. You talk to them. When you get a crush or if something bad happens or if something good happens, you're like, oh man, I want to call my best friend. I want to talk to them right now and tell them everything that's going on in my life. And you just get super excited. You talk all the time. They help you if you have a project or if you have to do something in your room or you have to clean up or whatever, like they'll come and help you out so that you can get it done quickly. Or they comfort you if you get sad, you know, something bad happens, they'll come and hang out with you to make sure you're okay. They do all that stuff for you. So we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit because he is our best friend. But the thing we need to understand about him is that he is a person. And a lot of people don't think that. They just think Holy Spirit is like some kind of ghost or something. And he's not a ghost at all. Um, So we're going to talk about how we know that he's a person. Now, if we go to the book of Genesis, um, where creation happened, we're going to go to Genesis 1.27. It says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. God said, like us. And if he said like us, that means there are more than one people in that conversation, right? So who are they? Who were those us that God was talking about? Well, it was God the Father, Jesus the Son, and Holy Spirit, our best friend. When you put all three of them together, it's called the Trinity. So God is three parts in one. And to help you understand that, we're going to talk about an egg, like just a regular egg you eat. When you have an egg, on the outside, it's hard. You have the shell. And then when you break it open, you have the yellow part that you see, that's called the yolk. And then like the kind of white, clearish part that you see. When you cook it, it turns white. That's called the egg white. So you have three parts of the egg, but it's one egg. Just like with the Trinity, we have father, son, Holy Spirit, but it's all God. Okay, does that make sense? Now, the Holy Spirit is our best friend. We can spend time with him like we do our best friend. We can talk to him like we do with our best friend. He helps us when we're sad, and he comforts us when we're upset. Um, And it takes time to get to know him, just like your best friend doesn't become your best friend overnight. It takes years. You know, my best friend and I have been best friends for 18 years. And we didn't become best friends the day we met. It took 18 years for us to really develop and become what we are now. And it's the same with Holy Spirit. He can come and we can start getting to know him right away. As soon as we get saved, he's there. But it'll take a little bit of time for us to really be like best friends, best friends with him. And it starts by learning who he is, because a lot of people don't know that, which is why we're here today. So in Acts 1-4, Jesus tells the disciples that he's going to send, that God is going to send the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts 2, he actually comes. So the Holy Spirit started out from Acts as a promise. Jesus promised that God was going to send him. And God does not break his promises. He keeps them no matter what they are, no matter how many he makes. He always keeps his promises. So in Acts 2... He kept that promise and he sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples. 
So they all got filled and now he's available for any of us. He's available for you. He's available for me. Anybody that's a Christian that believes in God has access to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't something that we have to wait for God to give us. He already gave him to us. It's our job now to have faith or believe. When you have faith, it means that you believe. So in order to receive the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have to believe that we can receive it because it's already ours. It's not something that we have to be perfect for. We don't have to do the right thing or say the right thing or be the right person. God already sent the Holy Spirit for us. We just have to receive it. And it can come right away. Like I said, as soon as you get saved, if you already know about the Holy Spirit, as soon as you get saved, you can be filled. Or it could take years. For me, it took a while because I didn't understand who he was. I tried, I wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit when I was in high school, when I first heard about him. And I had an issue with my faith, with my belief, and it didn't happen right away. And it took me a, a long time, honestly, because I just didn't have the faith. Nobody ever taught me who the Holy Spirit was which is why I feel like it's so important for me to teach you guys now that I know because he makes everything so much easier and so much better. When he has, when you have him to be your best friend, it really changes things for you. And I want you guys to know who he is. Um, so let's see. When we do get filled with the Holy Spirit, he comes with lots of gifts. We all love gifts, right? In 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, it lists nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about those really quickly. One is wisdom. Now, when you have wisdom, it gives you the ability to make good decisions. Some people don't make the best decisions, but it's a gift that the Holy Spirit can give so that when you have something big happening, you can make the right decision. So that's one. Number two is special knowledge or the gift of knowledge. And that's when you know something that you should not know or that you would have no way of knowing. Like if a stranger was walking by and you just started talking to them and the Holy Spirit could say something to you about like where they work or where they live to spark a conversation so that you can introduce them to who Jesus is. That's the gift of knowledge. Faith. We all have faith. Everybody has faith. Uh, it's just some people have it more than others. And with this, you can have the gift of faith. And that's when you just really believe 100%, no doubting at all whatsoever who God is and what he can do. And like for me, I can go back and remember, I told you that it took me a while to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because my faith wasn't that strong because I didn't even know who he was. So I did not have the gift of faith at that time because my faith wasn't that strong. Healing is another gift. And this is when you have the ability to pray for someone and they get better. You can have that gift and it's used to show everyone who God is with his power, you know, because normally you, a normal person wouldn't be able to go into a hospital and pray for somebody that was sick with like cancer and they get better. So it can be a gift that you can have from Holy Spirit. Gift of miracles. That is when you are able to do something that you should not be able to do. So let's say someone has a broken leg and they're, you're at church and you can go up to them and you can pray for their leg and it gets better right then and there. That would be the gift of miracles. Some people have that. Prophecy is when you know something about someone's future. So like if I was out somewhere and someone came up to me and they said, you are going to own your own business. I currently do not own my own business, but God told them that I was going to. So they came to me and told me that that way I can go to God and I can pray about it and I can get more instructions so that it can happen because maybe I would have never pursued my own business unless that person came to me and said, that's what God wanted for me. Right? So that's the gift of prophecy. Another one is discernment, and that's when you're able to tell whether something is from God or not, because sometimes people can tell you things on their own that didn't come from God. Like if someone came up to me and said, you're going to meet 
your husband tomorrow. If I had the gift of discernment, I would be able to decide whether that was God telling them that or whether that was that person just trying to convince me of something that wasn't real. We have unknown languages or speaking in tongues. And that's something that a lot of people have an issue with. A lot of people don't think that it's right um, or don't think that it should be done. Some people think that it's fake, but it's not. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. And it is the ability to speak in either a language that is already like a real language, like Spanish or French. Like I cannot speak Spanish, but... Um, if I was like in Mexico and I was on a missions trip to help people there learn who God is, if I was talking to somebody, the gift of tongues could come on me and I would be able to fluently just speak in Spanish to tell people about Jesus. So that's one thing, one, one way it works. And then another way, it's called a heavenly language. And that is when you are talking to God directly and it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else around you. It's just you and God and you're having a conversation. And that is important because it helps you with your faith. It helps build your faith up. It, it helps you to communicate with God because sometimes you might not have the words to say. You, you want to talk to God, but you're either like really upset or you're really excited or you're something's going on and you just don't have the words to say. You can speak in your heavenly language or speak in tongues and God will understand exactly what you're saying because it's for him. It's not for anybody else. So we have the gift of tongues and then we also have the interpretation of tongues. So interpretation means that you're able to tell what is being said. So like, for instance, we'll say that someone else is speaking in Spanish because I don't speak Spanish. I could have an interpreter who knows how to speak English and Spanish. So they would listen to what the person is saying in Spanish, and then they would tell me what they were saying. That's an interpreter. So when it comes to speaking in tongues, sometimes you can have an interpreter. So if someone starts speaking in tongues in a public setting, and none of us know what is being said, there could be an interpreter there that can tell us what that person is saying. Um, and that is one of the last gifts that's listed in 1 Corinthians as a gift of the Spirit. So when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit or when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, those are the type of gifts that he can give us. And we don't always get all of them. Everybody doesn't get every gift because each gift is important and each gift works in its own different way with different people. Um, just like, you know, all of our body parts as people are important, right? You need both your arms, both your legs, both your eyes, you know, you need your head. Everything is important. And that's the same thing with the gifts of the spirit. They're all important, but everybody can't have all of them. So they get distributed to different people in different ways and everybody works together with them, right? So when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, where does he go? Where does he live? He lives inside of us. He becomes a part of who we are. So when we hear God's voice, that would be the Holy Spirit in us. Or if we, um, if we, the, the joy that we feel when we just get really happy, that is the Holy Spirit. The comfort we feel when we're sad, that's the Holy Spirit. He's there for us as a part of us and, and helps to support us. So why is he so important? Because, you know, some people don't think that you necessarily need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So why is it so important? Why do you need it? Well, he gives us strength. Without him, we're weak. So when the devil comes along and he wants to tempt us to do something wrong or whatever, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, he can give us the strength we need to stand up and do the right thing. The Holy Spirit was sent as a promise from God. And we're able to live a life that's pleasing to God when we have the Holy Spirit. We just have to make the decision to receive him. It's up to us. We have to learn about him, know who he is, and then decide that we want to receive him. We don't have to wait for God to give him to us because he already did. That's what's so awesome about it. He's there, he's waiting, and he's ready to fill you. You just have to make the decision that you want to be filled, that you want him to be a part of who you are. So hopefully 
this gives you a better understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. And I'm really excited to see how you guys grow and how you guys develop just from this lesson alone, because the Holy Spirit is your best friend. He is waiting to spend time with you, to hear from you, to talk to you, and to fill you up.